Gordon Miller NQ4K, Sterling Park Amateur Radio Club, and this is our website, www.qsl.net stroke sterling. If you go to that web page, there's links down to the QSO party pages. This briefing is up there along with other things. Why am I here? That's because the most important thing in the Virginia QSO party is to have fun, and the way we have fun is by getting a lot of people participating in the party. And that means you. How many people here have participated in the party in the past? Oh, no. There's probably 20 people here then that have not, and that is excellent. Because as you will see later, we need you this year to participate in the party so that we can get at least 400 logs in this year. I have been dreaming of that now for several years. Other things we appreciate are the people who uh, give us money to be the plaque sponsors. This year we have 27 plaques, which is up from last year, 26, and I'll talk more about that in a little while. And we have our award ceremony up at the Manassas Ham Fest, not too far from here. It takes about an hour if you want to come up and visit us during that time. Today we'll talk about the rules very briefly. We'll talk about the numbers from last year's party and all the parties in the past. Very briefly, we'll talk about the high scores that we've had now, and we'll discuss the certificates. And more importantly, the certificate you get if you participate this year in the Virginia QSO party. These are the people from our club, mostly from our club, who put this on. This is Henry K2BFY. He does our log scoring software. So when you submit your log, you submit it in Cabrillo format, which is output from most of the logging programs. Henry will, our, our, will run through our scoring software and we'll, we will recompute the score. So regardless of what your scoring software says, whether it makes mistakes or doesn't make mistakes, the only score that counts is the one that we compute. This is Bill. He's uh, in our club. He solicits for plaques. He's been working on that now for about three months, and he sent me an email about four days ago saying we now had all the plaques covered. Uh, this is me. I do a little bit of coordination, and I help with the scoring. Dick, W2YE, he handles the rules for the Virginia QSO party. If you have a complaint about how we conduct it, go talk to Dick. You may see Dick at local ham fest. He is the uh, bureau manager for the incoming two-letter prefix fourth call area QSL bureau. And at a lot of the ham fests, he'll have a table out there somewhere near the entrance where you can go and give him envelopes so you can get your incoming QSL cards. This is Eric. He actually runs the uh, scoring software. And this is John KX40. He helps us with the uh, uh, plaque scoring. But he also has been a driver in a push we've had to, get, to try to get more participation inside the state of Virginia by uh, sponsoring two plaques, the Virginia QS only club plaque and the uh, high single operator Virginia QSOs only. I will talk more about those later. In years past, we've uh, run the club station from K4NVA, which is just south of Leesburg. Uh, that's owned by Dick, W2YE, and he has a couple operator positions out there. We normally run one on CW and one on voice, and we have a good time out there. This year, unfortunately, this is not going to be on the air full time, and I'll talk about that when we talk about the rules. <coughs> okay, two major changes to the rules this year. Uh, the first change is we've added a 27th plaque. And this is for a high single operator youth award. So if you're 19 to 24, you're eligible for this award. And the second thing we've done is we've changed how we work bonus stations. In the past, if you've contacted K4NVA, that's the <coughs> bonus station I just talked about, you got an extra 500 points added to your score. This year, uh, for a variety of reasons, we decided to change how we run bonus stations. So this year, there are going to be 14 bonus stations. Each time you contact the bonus station, you make one contact with a bonus station, you get 100 points for that bonus station. There's 14 bonus stations. That's uh, 1,400 points just for making 14 contacts. Uh, Stan, K2SSB, is going to be running a bonus station here in the local area. And I, I guess he's going to solicit help from you all to... Uh, to help them run that. Because I've, I've won for the last uh, three years for the plain and simple reason that I was the only operator in Charlottesville. <laughs> 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 
So the other reasons we went to bonus station is uh, we tried to generate some stations operating from these low QTH areas where we have not had much participation in the past or commemorate some special event. But there's a third reason I don't list on here and that is because the uh, the ham fest up in northern Virginia, the Annandale, the Vienna ham fest, which is held over in Annandale, is on the same Sunday as our Virginia QSO party. So we can't operate our club station that Sunday because Dick, who owns that club station, has to be at the ham fest with the incoming QSL bureau. In addition, we've noticed in the past that maybe some people down in the central part of Virginia are unable to hear K4NVA for some reason. Vagarity is a propagation, who knows? So this year we spread the stations around and we hope we get better coverage for those stations. We want to promote amateur radio activity in the 95 counties and the 38 Virginia independent cities. That's 134 different, 133 different places in Virginia you can contact in order to get QSL multiplier credit. Our hours are Saturday 10 to 10 and Sunday 8 to 8. Real easy, that's local time, 10 to 10, 8 to 8. Uh, we changed that a couple of years ago. We used to run 30, 39 hours straight overnight, over Saturday night, and I couldn't stay awake anymore. We noticed a lot of people didn't stay awake anymore. We graphed the results, and sometime around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, there were almost no contacts being made. So we said, we're not going to beat ourselves to death, and so we just eliminated some of those night hours. We have lots of, lots of categories, and there are almost too many to remember. Uh, we go through and manually check to make sure that any plaque for which you are eligible you will get considered for. But the important things you have to do is remember to enter whether you're a single operator or multi-operator. That has to be on there somewhere. And if you are a multi-operator station, have to remember in your file to list all the operators who, who are there at your station. You have to remember to put down your power category and over here, you have to remember to put down what type of station you are, whether you're a fixed station, a mobile station, or an expedition. If you get those three things right, then we will do the rest of the manipulation to ensure that you are competitive in all the categories for which you are eligible. Most important, somewhere either on the Cabrillo file and the header information or on your paper uh, summary sheet, you have to put down the name of your club. If you don't put down the name of your club, then we can't uh, add your score to the club score. Uh, valid contacts, you know, Virginia stations work all stations, non-Virginia stations work Virginia stations. Uh, I don't think there's anything else on here I want to talk about. The exchange. The exchange is a QSO number and your QTH. And your QTH here in the state of Virginia is either the county or the independent city which, where you are located. Uh, and there's nothing else I would like to talk about on here. Scoring. Phones are worth one point, CW is two points, digital is two points, and if you contact a Virginia Mobile, you get three points. The multipliers are only counted once. Uh, the Virginia multipliers are the counties, independent cities, U.S. states, Canadian provinces, DS countries, and of course you don't get credit for the U.S. Virginia and Canada. This is an interesting rule right here. Several years ago, uh, we, we, had a, we think we had a problem, you don't really know, with uh, a couple of mobile stations running up and down 81 and 95 just talking to each other. You know, I don't know if you've ever run across that. You know, they'll go up the band and, you know, down the band and hit the next city and you, you can hear them and you can see it reflected in some of the logs also. So, uh, one of the first things we tried was, you know, the stick part. I should have known about the carrot in the stick, but we tried the stick part, and we put in the 15-minute uh, band rule, right? You can only stay in a single band. For, you got to stay on a band once you started on it for 15 minutes. I don't think I ever got so much hate mail in my life. That was not a popular rule. So we changed it, and the rule now became, if you are in this county or independent city, and you make you contact 10 or more different stations, then we will give you a multiplier for that county or independent city, regardless of whether you actually contacted somebody else in that county or independent city. 
Uh, this is important. There's a lot of counties, independent cities, here in the state of Virginia, where there are not that many operators in there. And you may be there, but not actually talk to someone. So uh, by just going there and making your 10, your 10 points, we'll give you multiplier credit for it. Okay. So, ah, okay. So you get bonus points. Uh, if you're a mobile or expedition, you get 100 points for each county or independent city from which you operate. And of course, you get 100 points for each of the 14 bonus stations you talk to. Your final score is QSO points times multiplier plus your bonus points, and you get a nice score. These are the bonus stations for 2016. We've got a very nice distribution of stations throughout the state of Virginia. This up here is the K4 NVA. That's, that's the club station. Uh, the red stars are fixed stations. The green things here are mobile stations. And let's see here. Here's a K2 SSB here in Charlotte, Charlottesville. We've got a couple stations down here in the southwest. So we're hoping that, at least with all of those stations, everybody in the state of Virginia is going to be able to get contact with at least some of those. So uh, entries, you can submit multiple entries in this contest. So you can submit a fixed, an expedition, or a mobile log. We have had at least one person in the past submit three. A uh, guy worked fixed station from West Virginia, worked Virginia, West Virginia Mobile as he went from his house into Virginia. He drove around in Virginia as a Virginia Mobile for a while, and then he went home. So he did three logs that year, fixed station uh, and two mobile logs. So we'll take as many logs as you want to submit. We prefer you submit your logs electronically, Cabrillo format. Makes it easy for us. We can rescore it. We do get, I don't know, 30, 40 logs in paper, and it, it takes us a while to rescore those. We have to go through and check to make sure the scores are all computed correctly. Everybody gets a certificate. I hope those people who participated in the past have gotten a nice certificate. And here are our plaques. There are 27 plaques this year. In previous years, I've managed to squeeze all of those plaques onto a single page, but this year when we hit 27, I couldn't do it anymore. So now it's on two pages. So we have plaques that are available only to Virginia stations. Those are shown on here. We have high power, we've got low power, we've got QRP, we've got uh, a plaque for Virginia Expedition, we've got two club plaques. I'll talk more about these later. One is combined score and one is club plaque for Virginia QSOs only. And uh, we've got phone, we've got CW, we've got mixed, we've got any a plaque for just about any combination you can think of. <coughs> Here are some plaques that are available to any single operator. They can be in the state of Virginia or not in the state of Virginia. Uh, two years ago, K4AMG uh, volunteered to do a plaque for single operator youth. And those are people who are 18 years or younger. And I think that's because they run a, a club very oriented towards uh, bringing young people into amateur radio. I think some of those maybe got a little bit older because this year they volunteered to do a single operator young adult, which is 19 to 24, and that's new for this year. So somewhere, I don't know if any of you are that young, uh, somewhere either in a Cabrillo soapbox up in the Cabrillo header format, put in you know, youth and your age, or if you're doing the summary sheet, we have a place on there for your age. If you're 75 or 80, you don't have to tell us your age. <laughs> we also have plaques available to single stations outside the state of Virginia, and there's three of them, and we have a plaque for a DX station. So we've got our, I don't know, we, we have a lot of plaques. Originally, we were thinking we wanted to restrict the number of plaques, and then we decided <coughs> if people want to donate some money to buy a plaque, more power to them and we will do it. Metadata. The first award ceremony I went to out at the Manassas Ham Fest, I was passing out plaques, doing very well, and then people asked me for numbers. And of course, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared to do any numbers. So I went home and immediately realized the benefit of Excel spreadsheets. 
And so every year after that, I can generate all the numbers people want. Well, I mentioned uh, we have to do scoring. So last year on April 18th, uh, Red in 3TG and me and Dick sat around a table at our house. And we took about an hour to score all the paper entries that we got. And then we took about two hours drinking coffee and, and eating pastry. So we had a very good morning that morning. We do go around and give these presentations. Middle Peninsula, ARC. Hello. Alexandria Amateur Radio Club, Roanoke Valley Amateur Radio Club, Chesapeake Amateur Radio Service, and last year we missed Shenandoah Valley Amateur Radio Club because there was snow. I think three years ago, maybe four years ago, we were out here. And, but I didn't go back and get the picture. But WIFE over here is going to take the picture so that next year when I give this presentation down here, you will be there. Yes, or over there. You can stand in the circle. Yes, I will send you a copy. So, I watched the number of logs. Back here in 2001, we had 110 people submit logs. And it started growing, and it started growing, and it started growing. And when we hit 300 here, I was starting to get, you know, big. We're going to be the biggest QSO party in the United States. And then up in here in 2013, we hit 386 logs. And I thought to myself, there is no way we're not going to hit 400 logs in the next year. I mean, just look at this growth. And of course, the next year we went down. And last year we went down a little bit more. So we're down at 375 logs. But I saw in this room, there are about 20 people who did not raise their hand, meaning they get to participate this year for the first time and submit a log. And if you do that, you know, we'll break 400 logs this year. What bands? You haven't said it unless you showed it. I'll show it. I won't know it unless you say it. So, this is an interesting distribution. Most people who participate in Virginia QSO party are amateur extras. 252 out of the 375. Some of you people who have been around longer notice there are no novices on here anymore. I haven't seen a novice submit a log in a long time now. The high score last year was over 900,000 points. The low score was one. And we had four people submit a a log with that got a scored one. So what's a what's a one? A one is a single voice contact without contacting a bonus station. So that's one times one uh, plus no bonus points. That's one point. We in the past we have had people get a score of zero, and that's actually not that hard to do. Okay, so people will send in a log and they'll have you know 30, 40, 50 contacts in there, but they leave some information out of the log for some reason. And if we don't have a valid QSO, they get zero points for that QSO. So, you know, no valid QSOs times, you know, one or two or three is still zero. Don't contact K4NVA, so they get a score of zero. We still give them a certificate. They submitted a log. Uh, if you're a VHF operator, what a very common thing to do is uh, somehow you think you're in a VHF contest and you have grid location over there rather than QTH being county and independent city. So... That doesn't count either. That's not a valid QSO. The VHF people may like it, but we don't. Notice most people here are phone, make phone contacts. 185, so that's about a half of the people do phone only. Just slightly less than that are mixed. And only three digital modes logs were submitted last year. That means any, almost anybody is going to win our digital plaque next year. I mean, with only three entries, one of them sitting in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Did you win last year? Uh, 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 number one in Elmer County. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only one doing digital in Elmer. <laughs> okay. 
Most hams use low power. It almost doesn't matter. We've looked. Low power does as well as high power in our contest because all the multipliers, most multipliers are in the state of Virginia. And so anybody on 40 meters low power can contact almost anybody in the state of Virginia. And last year we had a big increase in the number of expeditions. Maybe because the year before there were only three expedition logs and I stood up in front of a bunch of people and said, you know, if you want to win a plaque, you can easily win it in expedition. And last year that increased the competition somewhat. All right, here's the band breakout of where people operate. Uh, most people use any band they want. They follow the, the, uh, the activity wherever it goes. But the most popular band besides that is, is 40 meters. And uh, there's people in Ontario that can use 40 meters, and they just hit right here in the state of Virginia, and they get good coverage throughout the state of Virginia. And people inside the state of Virginia... Uh, get good coverage on 40 meters also. QTHs, most logs are submitted from the state of Virginia. About two-thirds of them come from in-state. About one-third come from other places. We do get logs from other places, the U.S. and Canada. We got logs from 34 states and two provinces last year. We had logs from 70 different counties and independent cities, independent cities in the state of Virginia. And it's a little less than last year. Uh, the big ones are Falkier County, Fairfax County, Loudoun County, a bunch of mobile operators, and Prince William County. I don't even know what Charlottesville did last year. Let's see here. CHX? One. ALB was two. Two. Oh, my gosh. What about Richmond? Well, that's Richmond County and Richmond City, so this would be Richmond City, I think. Enrico, Enrico County. Let's see here, RIC. Richmond, there were none last year. That's amazing. Yeah, they're right here, RIC and RIX, and this says none. No, all the, all the cities had an X-ray. Pardon? All the cities had an X-ray. Yes. Yep. It looks like Matthews only had one off. Okay, what logging programs are popular? The most popular logging program now is N1MM, and that's on the top line. Second most popular is N3FJP. If you're new to this and haven't done it before, uh, $6, download it online. It's very easy to install, very intuitive to use. It exports a Cabrillo file. Uh, N1MM is more popular because it's free. Uh, if you haven't used it before, you really should get someone to help you use it for the first time. It's a little bit diffi difficult to set up, and you have to understand the difference between a database and a log and how to get to the state QSO parties. It's a lot easier if you get someone to help you. Yeah, that's N1MM plus now. Plus, yes, it's plus. And we got 39 logs still on paper, and we got 23 fat fingered. Those are people who probably copied it down on paper and then manually typed it in with their fat fingers into a text file and sent us the text file. Okay, if you count contacts, we had 91,000 contacts last year, so that's about a little more than 45,000 QSOs. And this is uh, just on the electronic logs. Uh, 12, 12, 12. Last year, well, I'll go to the next slide. Last year, for the first time since I've been involved in the QSO party, we had every single county and independent city in the state of Virginia activated with HF contacts, not just uh, you know two meter, four forty centimeter contacts, but but HF contacts. And I have a chart there that shows this a little bit before. If you go back in the year, you would think there would be some consistent pattern to where the counties and independent cities that were not activated were, but there's not a consistent pattern there. It's kind of random. I think everybody sees this chart and they say, okay, this year I'm going to go and get those that weren't made, but then something else gets uncovered. It'll be interesting to see if we get them all again this year. This is uh, modes of the, con of the uh, QSOs, and by popular, phone on the bottom, has most of them. 37,000 out of the uh, 46,000 contacts were phone. Digital had 150 contacts in all of the logs. So 150 divided by three, you know, that's about 50 contacts. But a lot of those contacts were maybe in 
logs that weren't submitted as digital logs. How many did you make? About 20, maybe. Okay. About 8,000 were uh, CW. Of the QSOs, these are the bands that the QSOs were made, in, made on. So by far, the most popular band is 40 meters. They had 30,000 QSOs out of the total of 45,000 QSOs. Now, this is only electronic logs, but we only had a few paper logs. And then the second most popular was somewhere down here between 20 meters and 40 meters. And someone pointed out, I don't know where this came from. That was probably my fat-fingered mistake when I, when I did my analysis of the bands. I have three charts here which talk about QSOs by county or independent city in the state of Virginia. And you can read all of those numbers and find out where you are. Uh, last year there were no reds, there were no zeros, but the big ones were Culpeper, that's where the Falkier Amateur Radio Association comes from, uh, Fairfax County, Falkier County, Loudoun County, and I hope you got all those numbers. But to make your life easier, I put it in color diagram. So this is, uh, at some point in my prior life, I was a defense contractor, and contrary to what you believe, I didn't have all that much extra time, but every now and then I had an extra hour or two, so I color-coded this stuff in, in paint starting in 2005. So the red are zero contacts, and here's Lee, Russell, Smith, and you can see the red. The purple is one to ten contacts. You can see a lot of purple. The yellow is eleven to ninety-nine, the double digits, yellow. The light green is uh, triple digits, 100 to 999, and if it's dark red, they had over 1,000 contacts. So this is uh, 2005, and we've done the same chart in 2006, 2007, 2008. Look at that. All that most of that red and purple is disappearing, 2009. Uh-oh, some of this coming back. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So last year, there's no red on here at all. We had just three places, I think three, where there was less than ten contacts, and these all had at least five. Uh, so coverage is pretty good. So you all pick your favorite spot, and we'll run through this just like it is a movie. There we go. I mentioned we had two club plaques. The original club plaque was what we call high club combined score. I take all the logs that come in, and I have your scores, and I see what club you're in, and I just add all the scores together. We just combine the scores. And for years and years and years, uh, the Central Valley Contest Club, this is light gray, was the winner of that plaque. And they won it for several years, and then the last time they won it was in, what, 2010, and then their station fell apart and they went down. And here's the Falkier Amateur Radio Club. Somewhere around 2008, a guy named John Huggins, KX4O, uh, his name was on the first slide, said, we want to emphasize uh, participation and making contacts in the state of Virginia. So he started to organize his, the club he's in, the Falkier Amateur Radio Association, to get people in that club to participate. And you can see how well how well they did and they've continued to win that combined score plaque uh, up until last year. The third place is LARG, that's the Loudoun Amateur Radio Group. They meet up in Leesburg and they started out way down here and they started getting better and better and then they went down and better and better. They had a club member die and they they fell down. So you think Falkier Amateur Radio Association is way up there. But I said John Huggins organized his club to get participation. And this is how the number of the log counts by club. And the Falkier Amateur Radio Club had 30 people in their club submit logs. And so what, this, what they're doing up there is they're saying you don't have to have the high power and the big antennas. Most of the multipliers are, you know, the 134 multipliers, 133 multipliers are readily available to someone when they make contacts in the state of Virginia. 
QRP stations and low power stations can easily make contact on 40 meters in the state of Virginia. And so that's, that's what he did. He said, let's, let's get, as a club, let's get a lot of people participating and let's focus on those things where we can build multipliers, making the contacts in the state of Virginia. And uh, last year, uh, Loudon Amateur Radio Group was up to 28, 25, and last year they fell down to 19 logs. But John said, going along with that idea of making contacts in the state of Virginia, let's have a high club plaque Virginia QSOs only. So the, the only way we can compute this is if you submit an electronic log, we then take all of those logs and we strip out the non-Virginia contacts and we recompute the scores. And then we add those scores together by club. So the only thing that counts in this plaque is Virginia contacts. And almost anybody can get Virginia contacts. Well, John Huggins at the time was thinking, I can't compete with CVCC because they have a high-powered station down there with plenty of tall towers and antennas. And they didn't, he didn't have anything like that in his club. But he said, if we just focus on Virginia contacts only, then we can be competitive. And of course, this is when it started in 2008. And he, they won it in 2008. They won it in 2009 and 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 and 14. And then we came to last year. And when I first computed these scores last year, I said, based upon that previous slide, whoops, whoops, oh, how am I doing here? Look how far ahead Falkier was for a combined score. I said, there's no way that Falkier is going to lose this if you just count Virginia QSO party only. But of course, I was mistaken. I went through and recomputed it a couple of times, and I found out that for some reason, LARG, Loudoun Amateur Radio Group won that by about 50,000 points last year. And it was a surprise to Falkier Amateur Radio Association as well as to LARG. It will be very interesting to watch that, that, that competition there this year. And who gets the plaques? 27 plaques now. Last year there were 26. And I think the year before that, a couple of years before that, there were 25. And we wondered where they were all coming from. The Falkier Amateur Radio Association organizes their club, and they won seven plaques last year. And the way they did it was they went through their club, and they made sure that at least one person in their club was in each category. And just by making sure that there was somebody in that category competing, they opened up the number of opportunities they had to win different plaques. I keep thinking... There's no way people are going to get better every year. And that's just not true. Every year, someone will set a new high score in a couple of the categories. And last year, we had five new high scores. And you can see them listed up there. Uh, I, I don't understand how this happens. I guess people work at it harder. The equipment's getting better. Propagation's getting better. But every year, people set new records. I hope all of you who submitted a log in the past, have gotten a certificate. I see the certificates going back to 2004 where we celebrated the state boat and the state fossil. And, you know, I was in Smithfield one year, so we flew in the Smithfield ham. And at some point in 2011, we started talking about amateur radio stuff in the state of Virginia. And as you know, the first voice, our radio contact was made in 1865 up in Loudoun County between two antennas. That's the last year of the Civil War. Uh, Loomis actually died before he could really, you know, d mature this much more. I like this one in 2012. Those are three radio towers called the, the, uh, the uh, Three Sisters up by Fort Myer, and they were torn down. But I like the juxtaposition of the cavalry charge and the radio towers in the back. This is uh, Richmond, a Richmond commercial radio station. And then on the, uh, the right is, uh, I'll call that their mobile station. Uh, this is the uh, CubeSat put up by Thomas Jefferson High School. Last year, we, we had the two ARRL presidents who lived in Virginia when they were president of ARRL. And of course, Kay is, just gave up being president of ARRL. And this year, we have the 100th anniversary 
of the Richmond Amateur Radio Club. Rich, this is a George C. Robinson, uh, back then 3GX, and he was one of five amateur radio operators in the state of Virginia in 1913. And he formed, he was uh, one of the founders of the Tri-County Radio Club in April 1916, 100 years ago. And the Richmond Amateur Radio Club traces its, its uh, lineage through the Richmond Shortwave Club back to that uh, Tri-County Radio Club. That's a, that's a lot of years. All right, last slide. At the beginning, I said, you know, participation by hams is important. And that's why we want to get you out there. Where do we stand among state QSO parties? Here's California. They got 730 logs in October of last year. And if you just rank them by number of logs, they're number one. They're the largest QSO party by logs. Florida is number two by 516. Pennsylvania is number three by 383, plus or minus a few. And we're number four by three, with 375 logs next year. But with another 20 people or something like that, you know, we can easily become number three, cross my fingers and hope. But look at the number of licensed operators here. California, with their 730 logs, has over 101,000 operators. If you compute some statistic, which is, you know, number of logs divided by number of operators, they have uh, very, very low participation in their state. Uh, we have a little more than 18,000, almost 19,000 operators. We have really, really pretty good participation. So if you just rank this by how many people, how many operators in the state of Virginia participate in the party, uh, you know, we do very well. We're, we're like number one or two. So this is the challenge to you all. More participation, more logs, we move up this chain a little bit more. And that is the end. Do I have any questions? Ah, oh, must be at least one question. Okay. What's the date this year? Date this year is uh, 1920 March. Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 10, 8 to 8. Okay. Uh, can you put up the uh, slide again, which... Show them where they can download the, the rules and things like yes. that. Yes. Sure, I think page one. Page one. I'll just hold it down. Yes, sir. Can you state that line you did about the last year of the Civil War? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 So this is a. I didn't quite hear that back here. Okay. This is a 1921. Malin Loomis. He was a dentist in Washington, D.C. during the Civil War. <laughs> and he was also, uh, you know, uh, uh, worked. Was, was enthralled with this idea of wireless communication, which had not happened back then yet. So back then, uh, there was a way you worked telegraph was you had a ground rod in the ground at one spot, at one station, ground rod for the other station, and you had a single wire between the two stations, right? Not two wires, a single wire. And your ground, your return current came through the ground. And he had the same idea. He said, well, I, Benjamin Franklin said there's like electricity floating up there in the sky, you know, his kite with the wire on it. And he said that, therefore, there might be some sort of like conductor up there in the atmosphere. <laughs> so what he did was he, he went to two lakes in Loudoun County, and his telegraph setup consisted of grounding in the lake, wire, telegraph key and sounder setup, wire up to a kite, and the kite was up in the sky, and then... 20 miles away in another lake, he had the same setup. So he had kite up in the sky, wire, uh, telegraphy set up, grounded in a lake. And we pushed the key on one end, there was enough current flowing through that wire to generate a signal, which was then picked up by the other wire 20 miles away. Newspaper reporters saw it. It was popular enough so that uh, Congress voted him some money to study it aboard some ships in the Chesapeake Bay. He had a patent on it. This is 1865, the last year of the Civil War. He tried to get uh, money to kind of further develop it, you know, like venture capital from uh, New York, and there was a big stock crash about then, so that idea fell apart. He went out to Chicago and tried to interest some of the rich people out there in Chicago to invest some money in it. And the big Chicago fire happened, so he didn't get money from there. 
and then he died. And uh, that was the end of his series of experiments. Yes, sir. It's a road marker up in Clark County for Dr. Loomis. And uh, for years I've gone up to a field day in Maryland with a group of people I've known for many for a long, long time. Yes. And we enter as the Dr. Loomis Memorial Junior Mechanics League. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's actually a book. Somebody published a book about it, you know, with, and I have a copy of that at home. I thought that was very fascinating. I mean, the technology goes way back. He's way ahead of Marconi. Way ahead of Marconi. If he could just, but, but it wasn't necessarily very reliable, you know, because you were kind of relying on that static electricity potential difference between a couple hundred feet up in the air and the ground. But it was almost there. Yes, sir. Oh, hi. Or his kites. I, I don't remember. It's in the book. I can look it up, but I, I don't remember offhand. Uh, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Gordon, Gordon.